Looky here. Look what I got my grubby little mitts on. This is the new microphone from AKG, and it's called the Ara. Era. Air Aria. Ara. I'm going with Ara. 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 I think Ara is the way. I'm getting, yes, the Ara. We're going to test it. We're going to do it right now. News from the booth! Hey there, villagers. Welcome back to the VoiceOver Village. I'm Rick McIver, your dancing monkey. Today, we are going to look at this guy. This is AKG's new USB microphone, the Ara. This is AKG's brand new $99 budget-friendly USB microphone that is positioned perfectly to compete with mics like the Blue Nano or the Rode Mini. Well, look at that. I just happen to have those mics lying around. What are the odds? <laughs> crazy. No, it's not crazy. I, I bought them, actually, to for this review so that we could compare them because I thought that would be good. Let's keep going. First off, I want to let you know that this video, these microphones, none of this is sponsored. I bought all this with my own money. Just little old me here. I wanted to give you an honest review, no shenanigans. So there you go. Secondly, microphone reviews are best listened to on headphones. So if you're watching this on your phone, plug your headphones in. If you're watching it on your computer for your laptop, plug your headphones in. If you're on your television, go to a different device and plug your headphones in. <laughs> it's really hard to tell the difference between microphones if you're listening on your TV speakers or your laptop speakers or your iPhone speakers or phone speakers or whatever they are. You've got to have headphones in to be able to hear the differences, mostly. So go do that. We'll get started. Okay, let's save these for later because we're going to look at the accoutrement of the new AKG. The first impressions here is that it's an attractive mic. It looks good on camera, and that's kind of important these days. I also really like when you're using this mic properly and you have it turned up to face your mouth that the little logo's on top here. That's kind of a nice touch. The build quality of the mic is really quite good. It has a very firm metal mesh frame. The body is made out of metal. The stand is made out of metal. The little knobs here that you turn, these are plastic. I don't know that that matters all that much. If you're going to do metal for everything, why skimp out at the last minute and put plastic? Although it is $99, so, you know, you're not buying the Taj Mahal here. A logistical thing that I like about the way they've designed this is that you see this gap right here? This gap is nice where you plug in your headphones and you plug in your uh, USB cable. That gap is nice because when you mount this on a, a boom arm, which you're going to need to do if you're going to try to use it for voiceover, this microphone is most likely going to be tilted kind of like that. And you don't want these cables to bind on this little stand part because the base screws off, you screw this part to your boom arm. It's nice that it moves around without the cable's getting caught on anything. On the front of the microphone, you'll notice there are two knobs. The top knob is for the selection for whether you're in cardioid, which is the front selection, or omni, which is the front and back. The bottom dial is for headphone volume, and if you push it, it's the mute. All right, let's test out the mute button and see if there's a pop or a click or anything when you use it. So here it goes, mute on. Now the mute is off. One more time. Mute on. Now we turn the mute off. Hmm. Let me show you something. With the Blue Nano, the grill for the microphone goes all the way around the top. And unfortunately, what you see a lot of people do with this part pointed at their mouth. That's wrong. The capsule for this microphone is in the front. This is a front address microphone. You see a lot of people pointing it at them like this because they think it's this kind of microphone, which is a top address microphone. That can be confusing, especially if you're a new talent. With the AKG, they put this little flat part on top of the microphone, so if you accidentally tilt it towards yourself, you're obviously not supposed to talk into the microphone like that. That's nice. If you are going to use it with the stand, be aware that all stands translate into noise. You can hear the desk when I tap on it. If I'm going to use the keyboard or a mouse, you're going to be able to hear it. It's just an unfortunate side effect of putting a stand on the table because the sound transfers through
through the stand. You can't get around that. So my suggestion is to put it on a boom arm. Okay, it just comes off like that. Really easy. Let's put it on a boom arm and see how it does. I put headphones on. You should too. Because for this part, we're going to be comparing the different microphones and how they sound. I'm in cardioid pattern right now, which is the front selection switch. And what I can tell you is this. Holy crow. Now, there are no gain settings on this microphone. There is no way to adjust how loud or how sensitive this microphone is. That's kind of a problem because, as you can tell, now that I've put headphones on and I'm listening and I'm monitoring how this actually sounds, I'm clipping a little bit and this kind of booming sound on the mic, that is ridiculous. You can't use that. That's unusable. If you touch something, it's going to translate. Now, I'm unaware of any shock mounts for this particular microphone at the moment, but holy moly, does it need one. Now, here's the funny and interesting thing. Funny or interesting, I don't know, maybe both. When I switch this from front, so when I'm over here, I'm on front, right? Now, it doesn't pick me up in the back very well, but when I come back to the front, it picks me up just fine come back over here this is the off-axis rejection and now I'm back to the front where I'm supposed to be talking into the microphone it's pretty good when I switch it over to Omni which is 360 degree pickup pattern listen to the difference here's listen to this again now I'm gonna switch it over to omnidirectional where did that noise go it's gone but now since it's in omnidirectional it's picking up everything in the room. It's going to pick up everything. If I, if I do around the microphone like this, front and back, is just as loud. There is no off-axis rejection. However, there is a ton of rejection of any noise. No desk noise, no boom arm noise, no barely any microphone noise. I'm going to switch it back to cardioid. Hulk. What? That is just crazy. So let's bring in another microphone and see how they compare. Okay, now we have two microphones, two boom arms. Let's see if we can get this to work. Now we know about the horrible noise that this makes when you tap it or anything around it. So I'm gonna do my best to not touch anything in this general vicinity. So what I have over on this side is the $99 USB mic from Rode. This is the Rode Mini. The Rode Mini has a similar functionality to the AKG. The AKG has a mute button and so does the Rode. The AKG has a volume level for the headphones. So does the Rode. The AKG and the Rode both have this flat top to help eliminate the incorrect uh, mic placement for when you're speaking into it. That's both very, very nice. One thing that the Rode does not have that the AKG does have is that omnidirectional pattern. The Rode microphone really only is a front address microphone. Now the box and the instructions say that the Rode has an internal pop filter. Actually, both of these do. Let's do a plosive test. I'm gonna actually do good mic technique and then I'll do bad mic technique, just in case. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Now bad mic technique. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Okay, let's switch over here to the AKG. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Now, as a voice actor, rarely do you speak this close to a microphone and plose of it. But, you know, sometimes in a podcast situation or whatever, you might have a guest that just doesn't know how to do that. So here you go. This is the road, and this is how it sounds, and here's the AKG. The brand new $99 microphone from uh, AKG, the Aura. This is how they both sound. Let's bring in the next mic. The next mic is going to be the Blue Nano. Let's see how they sound compared to each other. Ta-da! Now we've got a new microphone. Here we have the Blue Nano. The Blue Yeti, which is technically more popular, has more pickup patterns and three capsules rather than two. And so this one is more representative of 
something that the AKG was probably competing against. Now, the thing about these two microphones uh, that's different, one, this one has the grill, right? So you can accidentally talk into the top of it. Um, they both have two pickup patterns. Um, the USB connections are different. This is USB-C, and this one over here is that USB mini jack. Um, I don't know if they're going to change that in the future because it seems like USB-C has become kind of the standard. But anyway, as I cut back and forth between these two microphones, hopefully you can hear a little bit of a difference. As I'm watching the waveforms as they record, they seem to be recording at about the same volume, so that's nice. Okay, so we did a plosive test with the Mini. We should do a plosive test here with the Nano. So let's do the proper mic technique first. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top, and then right into it. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Maybe you can hear a difference. I'll do the AKG just because. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Let's test the microphone for desk noise. This is the noise from the actual boom arm here on the Blue Nano. And we all know how horrible this sounds. Oh, oh, it's horrible. They both have mute buttons. They both have headphone volume buttons but neither of them have a gain function on here. The Nano here does come with some software that allows you to configure it in a way that you can adjust the gain on your screen, but you can't do it with this knob. That's really just for your headphone volume. Speaking of headphones, I really hope you've been listening to this review on headphones because that's really the only way you're going to be able to hear the differences between these two microphones, and unless they're really, really horrible. So now the plan is actually to go take all the footage that I've shot, edit it together, listen, and kind of put together my final thoughts. Let's take a look. All right, we're almost done. Home stretch here. I have been editing all day long, rewinding and listening and rewinding and listening and taking notes, and I've come to a decision. Tonally, I like the Aura the best out of the Rode Mini and the Blue Nano. And I'll tell you why. It has a little bit more of a rounded sound. Um, I found the other two to be thinner, a little more bitey. And for some reason, I'm not sure why, the, the blue, the nano, seemed to be crackling. I, I don't know what happened. I went and retested it again, hooked the cables up and did some recording and then played it back, and it still was crackling. I might have had a bad microphone. I don't know. But I also didn't like the tone of it either. So, overall, despite the horrible noise that this picks up, <laughs> I mean, come on. Maybe I have a broken one. I don't know. That's a good point, though. Maybe I got, like, when I had my uh, Tula, I got one and it was broken, so I just sent it back and get a new one. Maybe for some reason, this is broken. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send this back, exchange it, and get another one, and do some more testing. And if I find that the handling noise is not nearly as bad as this particular microphone is, I will make a new video, and I'll put a link to that video right up there. And, hear me out, if it doesn't, if I get it back and it doesn't improve at all, then I'm not going to make another video. You'll just have to take my word for it that this thing sounds horrible <laughs> if you touch it. <laughs> that being said, I did like this setting. So right now, I'm set on front. But if I set it over to front and back, it does get rid of all that handling noise, which is great. You just have to have a really well-treated room. So here's my recommendation. If you're doing a podcast and you're doing multiple people in a room... I would go with the Rode Mini because it has software and support that you can utilize in order to record efficiently. And you don't have to get the Rodecaster. You can actually use the software instead of the Rodecaster, but you have to have the Mini. As far as the Blue Nano goes, I'd steer clear. I don't like the sound of it. Uh, I don't know if um, I got a bad one or not, but it just sounds real thin and real bitey and very sibilant. I didn't like it at all. But if you're just getting started in voiceover, I find that the AKG Aura tonally is a little bit better. Plus, it's not as plosive sensitive, which is nice. And it's a little warmer, just a little bit. It's, I wouldn't call it a warm microphone, not by a long shot. However, 
Uh, it is warmer than the other two. I kind of like the AKG tonally compared to the other two. However, this problem, horrible. You got to have a very well treated space in order to be able to use the omnidirectional feature. But like I said, I'll make a follow up video up there if I get this back and it sounds a lot better on the cardioid position. If you're not sure about what cardioid means or omnidirectional for that matter, or there are other confusing terms that you've heard surrounding microphones, I made a video right there, I'll put it right there, all about terms for microphones. It'll help clarify a lot of things. So thanks for watching today. I hope this review has been helpful. Until next time.